The Kathmandu Valley is the place where everything starts. Although Nepal was severely damaged following the 2015 earthquakes, most trails, including the Everest region, escaped the worst and are safe to track. The country itself encourages travelers to visit the magnificent and bustling land of Nepal and to support them this way as they attempt to rebuild. Tenzing Hillary Airport serves as the main access point to visit the Kumbu region. We hope to complete the trek to Everest Base Camp via Gokyuri in about 16 days starting at the beginning of February. The Everest Base Camp track has often been awarded as one of the best long distance tracks in the world, though mass tourism is threatening its authenticity and its fate as a popular track. The track forms along the side of the Dutkozi Valley, the lifeline of the villages along the way. We follow the valley for the first couple of days, making numerous river crossings over suspension bridges. The trail crosses a larger tea house every hour or two, allowing for a fairly flexible track. Our first day in the Kumbu region takes us to Pakding. We are finding many tea houses closed due to the devastating damages from the 2015 earthquakes. But the ones that remained open are very accommodating and provide us with Nepalese friendliness, food, necessary supplies and happy faces. Our first night was chilly but not too cold. We start early to avoid a busy track. Once tracked in this region of the world, you won't forget the sound of the yak bells. A sound that led us all the way to Everest Base Camp. We reach Manjo, which marks the entrance of the Sagamata National Park. On the other side of the Dutkozi River, we have a huge hiker's lunch to gather the necessary energy for the big jump towards Namche. There are a lot of traditional huts and villages along the way, but also quite a few post-earthquake tea houses. The next bridge marks the entrance into Sherpa land. It's the highest and scariest suspension bridge of the whole track. From here it's about two hours straight uphill until we reach Namshi Bazaar.
Our first acclimatization day starts with a relaxing walk without our heavy backpacks to Kunda, a small shepherd village high above of Namche. To avoid altitude sickness, a very common occurrence in the Himalayas, it's important to give your body time to get used to the high altitudes of this region. This way, following the recommended rule, track high, sleep low. After some time on the plateau near Kunde, we head back down towards Namche for lunch and spend the rest of the afternoon in town. We meet a German and British hiker who have tracked in this region a couple of times before. They give us the best advice on the whole trip. Leave as much stuff as possible in Namche. You can pick it up on the way down. Yeah, let's let's look at the stuff we stripped down. So a lot of dirty stuff, like this um, dirty dirty um, laundry bag. We don't need it. Yeah. And dirty laundry inside a dirty laundry bag. A pocket knife. Not with, too sh sure. with a sharpener. <laughs> with a sharpener. We're leaving that behind. We reduced the total weight of our backpacks by nearly 6 kilograms, which felt amazing. We ripped the important pages out of our lonely planet, removed the surplus of our toothpaste, and storaged our summer trucking gear at the Yak Hotel. You can find our final packing list in the description. The next day, with our lightened backpacks, we head towards Tengboshe. Along the way we find a new friend, a young dog who follows us the rest of the day. Uh huh. Go Yeah, my uh -huh. group in Chinese. Ah. Two uh, people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chinese people is the group. A little bit, uh, six, 
Yeah. Uh, they have to fly back or helicopter. Ah. Yeah. Uh, you alone now. Yeah. All six people have to fly back. Sorry. All six have to fly back. Uh, yeah, normally. normally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Normally. See? Yeah. Hopefully we can do it. <laughs> we are slow, <laughs> but we. That's the most important part, I think. Okay. Okay. Namaste. Have a good day. Yeah. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. We have lunch before the final two and a half kilometers of the track will be straight uphill, a steep 500 meter climb. I still don't know how the porters are able to do this every day. They are definitely the unsung heroes of the Everest track in this region of the world. Without them, not even one expedition to the top of the world would be possible. Crossing another suspension bridge, we find a few hydropower fortune wheels, free blessings for everybody passing by. Two hours and a few silence swear words later, we finally reach Tengboshe. Officially, you are not allowed to swear or fight in the national park. There is a sign at the entrance. But this clamp was unreal, so we made a soft excuse. After a small nap, we visited Tengboshe Monastery, the highest monastery in the world. Tengboshe is located on a mountain ridge. During the night, temperatures can drop dramatically. Our water bottles froze solid. It's where we start to really feel the effects of altitude, with the thin air and freezing temperatures at night. It's the first place where we have neither electricity nor running water.
So today we hiked from Tengbosche to Dengbosche. Yeah, which was like the f night, the morning was freezing cold. We started a bit too early. Yeah, we started around 7 or 7.30, I think. The and water in our bottles got frozen Yeah, yeah. because it was still so cold, so we wouldn't start that early. No, <laughs> never. We, <laughs> that's, that was a mistake, I would say. It's like our energy dropped so lot that we wouldn't do anything at all and it wasn't a good thing. We walked along the bush and it was pretty um, destroyed from the earthquake. There was a monastery. Yeah, a nun's monastery. That was completely destroyed. Yeah. So it was a sad morning. And then we uh, had... It was a really sad morning. We, yeah, <laughs> we felt like we couldn't do it at all. Yeah, we were out of energy completely. Everything was too heavy. And um, then we had to cross the river and uh, we made... And the sun came out. Yeah, which was And it great. was awesome. Yeah, yeah. But then we made the, the wrong turn. Yeah. Yeah, because there was a shortcut, apparently. Um, so a we deadly shortcut which we took. Yeah. So if you ever uh, cross the bridge and you feel like you, that, that's not a safe way, just turn around even if you lose a few meters. It's yeah, worth yeah. it, I guess. It we had to climb a little bit. and uh, the With guide, the backpacks on, it wasn't... The guide we met um, just told us that last year there died, uh, a woman died there. Yeah, she slipped down and fell into the river. And there, when you walk across the river, there are always like signs of people missing, like who fell into the river, or like I don't know. And it's like we were out of energy, and then we saw this story, or we heard this story, and uh, it wasn't a good day. <laughs> and now we are in Dengbosch. Dengbosch. <laughs> After the obligatory Momo hikers breakfast, we start our second acclimatization day with a walk towards Chukong, a small village in the northeast of Dingboshe. We walk through the vast landscape, where only a few yaks are grazing, while we enjoy the scenery. If you just look at the height profile, it seems to be an easy hike, but with the lack of oxygen, it's a tough one. It's hard to believe that we are around 4,350 meters and the mountains surrounding us are more than 6,800 meters high. Four days. Then we will be ever space camp. No, I'm, yeah, no, I'm four days. <laughs> 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 Due to the unpredictable weather conditions, we were advised to change our tour and cancel the crossing of Chilla Pass towards Skokio Lake. As a result, we gained a couple of days to travel and split the walk to Lubusha into two short days, which is actually recommended anyways. Dukla is just a few kilometers from Dingbosha, so we walk slow and enjoy the crazy scenery.
We nearly arrived at our daily destination at Dugla. Just a small village over there. And it looks kind of inviting, I think. I'm already looking forward for the rooms. It was a short hike, but nevertheless not easy. And like, it was really, really windy. And sometimes because of this big fucker over there, and with the wind it was so 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 cold and yeah right now it's just like just a small bridge right there and from there we just go to our lodge have a tea I'm looking forward to have a noodles I want to have noodles with yak cheese I guess yes noodles with yak cheese and maybe some appetizer momos Freezing cold. So early in the morning, the sun is coming out. Hopefully, because our water in our bottles is frozen. It was a terrible cold night. And honestly, we can't wait to get down to to get a warm bed and a warm shower and a night where you like finally sleep all over it. Outside. But look at this view! Isn't this amazing? It's worth it. But I don't know for how many days. And now I will show you the, the toilet facilities. Yep, solid frozen. Also, everything is frozen here. This is where you grab your water from. So, hopefully, the next nights will be better. I never had like holidays like this where I was struggling that much because of cold. That's not stupid. I guess it's it will be one of the holidays. We will tell our children and grandchildren and it's like we have been at the Everest base camp and it was shit. <laughs> it was so freaking cold and I think like holidays the shells you will remind because uh, I broke my uh, my uh, shoulder. Like this one you will have in your mind that it was fucking freezing cold. You, we were struggling with the height so much. The altitude. And all these things. I think it's it's something else. I never remember a night where it was so cold that I always wake up, and it's also I get headache from being this so night cold. Was so terrible! I couldn't sleep for five hours, and I was like in this position, I couldn't move at all. <laughs> it was the world. It was you. As soon as we leave our lodge, it feels like the toughest uphill climb we have ever encountered. It's not about the steep terrain, it's the altitude and the sheer lack of oxygen that comes along with it. The Dukla Pass serves as a memorial, which reminds you how dangerous Everest really is.
few hours later we arrive in Lobusche. That night the temperature will plummet below minus 25 degrees Celsius. Our room is more or less like every other room on the track, with one exception, double glazed windows. It might sound silly, but that was a thing we were actually really looking forward to. Still it was freezing. On our way down someone told us about three glazed windows in the Busche. What? Despite the high altitude and the mild headache that we had for the last couple of days, we actually feel pretty good. We cannot believe that after all those weeks of planning and preparation, we would finally be at base camp tomorrow. First stop today will be Gorak Shep, the last stop before base camp. The wind is so strong that we have to wear sunglasses to see something. The climb is not long, steep or intense, but the elevation and lack of oxygen is seriously starting to affect us. We have to cross the Kumbu Glacier which due to the extreme weather conditions turns out to be all sorts of frightening. Small loose rocks and tons of gravel is not my favorite ground to walk on. I should have been so happy to have finally reached Everest Base Camp. In reality I was just afraid of the way back. I'm not a huge rock climber, but that's okay. The wind was really freaking me out. The day we have been to Everest Base Camp Alex Chicon and his team of Sherpa attempted to climb towards the summit in winter and without supplemental oxygen, but pinned down by winds that were simply too violent. Carrie 